Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. Today's video, we're going to be looking at how to add <laughs> this label right here to our router nodes. You would think that would be, you know, fairly simple and straightforward, but uh, not really in WPF. It took me a, <laughs> a little bit of time and some head scratching to get this to work, so I thought I would make this its own little standalone video because I'm sure there's other people out there that's had to scratch their heads on this one as well. So yeah, so what the, what the goal is today is we want to be able to add a router and, and it needs to have its own unique label on it so you can differentiate between the different routers, especially when you go to add a link, right? Um, because if you want to, if these didn't have labels on them, you wouldn't know what router zero, one, and two would be, right? So if you watched the previous video, the video, you know, about adding the links, you're probably going, well, how do you know which one is which? And that's why we need the labels, right? So let's get started. I am going to uh, just jump right in and try to, I'm going to try to make this a fairly short video. So if there's any questions, if I gloss over something, just post them in the comments under the uh, video and, and I'll try to answer them, okay? So I'm gonna start in the main window, xaml.vb uh, class, basically a main window class here. And if you remember, this, this is not new code. This is old code. This has already been checked in, but I wanted to, to show this, um, this uh, router.name. Well, this is what we want on the router is our label, right? And we, we'd already updated this property. And, and this name property right here is actually part of the uh, user control class. So, so I didn't have to actually uh, create the name property. It was already inherited from, it looks like framework element, right? So yeah, so what we do is um, when we add a router, from our main window, right? When we add a router, uh, we instantiate a new router node class, call it that router. We get the index, the canvas index. Oh, here it is. <laughs> so we get the canvas index from the canvas, so we know this is a unique ID on the canvas. We just marry the two, router underscore whatever its index is to make its name. And this is the uh, this is a unique name, basically any object on the canvas, but specifically just for our routers, right? Because we, when we go through our nodes, uh, we want to search by uh, what type it is and its name, right? We want to use that as our label on our GUI, right? So uh, this is, I'm doing a diff right now between a router node, a Cisco router node.xaml. Uh, this is the original, which is already checked in. You've already seen this. And this is the new one. There's a couple things that has changed. Uh, I took this height and width out of here. That really has nothing to do with um, what we're working on today. Uh, but I, I did that so it would automatically inherit its height and width from um, the main window. Because that's who instantiates it, right? And uh, so I was just kind of cleaning, cleaning it up a little bit. The rectangle code's pretty much the same until we get to the rectangle fill. All this grayed out lines are what got deleted and all the green lines on the right over here are what got added, all right? Okay, so here's where the, the label comes in and, and yeah, that, that's, that looks a bit convoluted, but uh, <laughs> believe me, it could be worse. So I would like to say that I, I read all the instructions all the documentation on on user controls and you know rectangles or the shape class and fill properties and and visual brushes and and all that stuff, but I didn't. I kind of stumbled across this paint with a visual visual brush. Uh, this is in uh, the WPF brushes overview. You can just Google. Visual brush, you'll find this. Um, and uh, this is how you do it using uh, the code behind. But we want to stick with our 
MVC model, so I want to visual objects in XML, okay? And <laughs> remember how I was saying it could get worse? Well, this is worse. I didn't read all this. I, I read some of this stuff, right? You have to, right? To kind of figure out what the hell all this stuff means. But uh, I basically just took this example here and, and, and hacked away <laughs> until I got it to do exactly what I wanted it to do, right? Yeah, so what they are doing, if you read the example, is they basically just put hello world on top of this, whatever that drawing is, right? And that's what most of this junk is right here, is drawing that, that weird shape. So once you kind of weed out you know, all the drawing junk that they added in here, which is super confusing, they should have never done that. But anyway, they did. So once you weed out all this junk, you basically just get, you know, um, here's your rectangle. And uh, you can say, you have to say visual brush visual. I didn't use this. And then you have to use a stack panel because you want to you wanna put something in the background and then you want to draw on top of it, which is going to be our text. So basically, you're going to stack them on top of each other. And that's kind of what they did here. They drew all this junk in the background and then just added hello world on top of it. And that's what this text block is right here. So if you look at it, see the, the stack panel right here and the stack panel background right here, that's everything in between this is just that drawing, right? And then they just add <laughs> a text block on top of it. And so that's what I did. I just basically took that, hacked away at it a bit, and... Um, Close this real quick. This is a little easier to look at. Yeah, so here's the uh, here's a rectangle, visual brush, right? Don't even know what that means. I guess it's visual, <laughs> visual but brush not visual. See, this is where reading the uh, the documentation would probably be helpful, but like I said, I was just hacking away at that example. Um, yeah, so we got the stack panel background. I just put the router image in the background, basically, and that was it. And then on my text block, I just, um, th this margin right here is to center the text, right? The foreground is white, which is basically the text color, and this is the text name. And if you ignore this binding stuff for a minute, you can just put whatever block whatever text you want in between these two quotes and that's it and, and that's and that's how you get text on top of this this rectangle it'd be nice if they actually had a a label property for rectangle <laughs> but and if they do i wish someone would let me know because uh yeah this was kind of a pain yeah so so now we can get our text on top of our our router picture right that was just part of it we wanted to be able to add the note name the router's name to each individual uh instantiation of the router of the cisco router class right and that's where this binding comes in and this right here was a real booger to find um it, it's it looks very simple once you look at it and i'll, I'll explain it here real quick okay so we're binding name which is the um, the name of the <laughs> of, of the class? Jeez, I hope this makes sense. Uh, which is the name of the class um, with the element name router? <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's kind of a head scratcher. I, it kind of makes sense, I guess. But um, so I'm. <laughs> I made some changes to the code to see if it would make it a little easier to explain uh, what's going on here with this binding. Because I, I think it's important, and if you understand it, it's it's pretty easy to, to implement. So up here I in, in the user control um, name, I, I put its name as XAML name, right? And in the class, I, I went ahead and initialized the class name, and I said me.name, which is my name, is, is going to be class name. And then I write it out. Okay, you know, my class name. So it'll pop up down here in the debug window. And we go to run this. And then 
then after the main window instantiates uh, the Cisco router node and assigns this to the name right here, you'll see that the class name will have to, I, I added a, a print statement right here, our debug statement under the edit node, which we haven't implemented yet. And it just says my class name is me.name again. So it's the exact same debug statement as right here, except this is after it's been instantiated and and the name has been the class name has been updated. So our XML is binding. This is the class name, name, <laughs> and and it's binding it to the element name. Uh, XAML name, which is this guy right here. Let's go ahead and run it and just take a look at it real quick. I'm okay. So we added it, and uh, here's our router. It says router underscore zero. Add another one. Okay, so everything's still working just fine. Now, if we click on um, edit, that's where I add the debug. Oh, so if we look down here at the debug, so here's where I I added the first router, add router zero. His class name was class name, which is what it's initialized as. I added the second router, router one, and I clicked on edit node. And, um, and as you can see, it dumped the debug statement router zero, right? So, um, yeah, so this is, this is the, the variable in the class that it's binding to and it's using our control as part of the Cisco router node class. So it, it knows um, what class to get this binding name from. Okay. <laughs> and <laughs> okay, well, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll try to answer them the best I can. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it is a little bit confusing. And and like I said, I, I kind of went through their quote unquote simple um, example right here. And and yeah, I was having problems with this data, you know, this, uh, I, I, this is like some kind of two-way binding and this path and all this other junk they got set up right here. And and after some poking around, I I came across you know, well, okay, I just want to bind to, you know, uh, something in, in the class, you know, it's, it shouldn't be rocket science. All right, let's just stop this. And um, I believe that's it. Let's see, um, Cisco router node. Okay, so we went through this uh, probably a little too much. Uh, these these other lines here, I was just cleaning up the code a little bit, removing and adding um, you know, spaces, make it easier to read. Uh, as far as the code behind goes, um, oh, well, here's the junk I added. Oh, maybe I'll leave it in this time, and then later I'll I'll take it out. All right. And for some reason, it, it said that I made changes to this link.xaml, but for the life of me, I don't see it. I don't see it. it doesn't have any red or green, so I, I don't know. But anyway, I'll I'll check it in. I I kind of went to our I went to the GitHub site and and kind of looked at it and said, well, it looks pretty much the same to me. So yeah, I, I don't know why um, Visual Studio thought something had changed, but anyway, don't forget you can support the Network Engineering Video Blog by a donation using a credit card and or PayPal or by purchasing products at the Muxall store. Details and links are in the description under this video. Well, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. That helps, and hit the subscribe button. That really helps. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comments under this video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.